Hey guys, welcome back. It's Nurse Karma, and today we're gonna be talking about hypernatremia. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. I feel like a little music should be playing in the background, like. So today we're gonna make it super easy when we're talking about hypernatremia. We're gonna break it up into three phases. We're gonna talk about cause, signs and symptoms, and treatment. Okay guys, so let's talk about causes. Okay, so number one cause is dehydration. When it comes to dehydration, you have to think to yourself, which one of my patients is most at risk for dehydration? We have patients that have diarrhea, the ones that are vomiting all over the place, blah, the ones that have fever uh, due to infection. You have to think about insensible fluid losses. Um, we also have our patients that have enteral feedings. They might not be getting enough water flushes and also our elderly population because they might not be drinking enough water. Another cause of hypernatremia could be prolonged use of normal saline. And this isn't that common, but it happens. Certain medications can also increase your sodium levels, such as corticosteroids, certain diuretics like mannitol, and certain medications given during cardiac arrest, such as sodium bicarb, amongst others. Certain medical conditions can also predispose you to hypernatremia, such as diabetes insipidus due to the excess urination, polyuria. Um, we also have to consider patients that have renal failure because they're unable to concentrate their urine and uh, get rid of electrolytes properly. We also have to consider patients that have Cushing syndrome and who have hyperaldosteronism because both these diseases cause for a increased secretion of aldosterone which leads to an increased reabsorption of sodium causing our sodium levels to increase okay so let's talk about clinical manifestations when we speak about hypernatremia it's important for us to realize that on an intracellular level we are dehydrated and this is going to make all the difference when we talk about early signs and symptoms versus late signs and symptoms all right so let's see what we're going to see in early signs and symptoms we're going to see dry mucous membranes we're going to see thirst the patient's going to be extremely thirsty um, they're going to be tachycardic as the body's trying to compensate for the lack of fluid and trying to pump out more fluid at a faster level. We're going to see hypotension, low venous jugular pressure, and restlessness. In late signs and symptoms, we're going to see more of a central nervous system involvement. And this is due to the shrinking of the brain cells. So what are we going to be looking for? Hyperreflexia. We're going to be looking for muscle twitching. We're going to be looking for these four C's. Very important, okay? We're going to be looking for confusion, convulsions. We're going to be looking for um, cerebral hemorrhage. And worst case scenario, coma. Treatment for hypernatremia is dependent on what is the underlying reason for these increased levels of sodium. We have to get a thorough history. Does the patient have renal failure? Do they have diabetes insipidus? What medications are they on? Are they on diuretics? Uh, what was occurring at home before the patient came on this admission? Were they having diarrhea? Were they having fevers, vomiting? All the things we spoke about before, very important. And there are certain labs that we can expect the physician to order. All right, so labs, we're gonna be looking at our ACBC, complete blood count. And what are we looking for? We're looking to see the hemoglobin and hematocrit. You might see an increase in the hematocrit because our red blood cells are dehydrated, okay? Uh, another thing we're gonna look at is the BMP, the basic metabolic panel. And this includes all our electrolytes. And we'll see here that our sodium will be elevated greater than 145. And we'll also be looking at how it trends down the line to see how the treatment course is going. Is the treatment effective? 
Another lab that we can anticipate to be ordered is a urine sample. And the purpose of this is for us to identify what the underlying cause of this hypernatremia is. Okay, so a couple of things we'll look at is the specific gravity in the urine. If it is greater than 1.030, then this is a good indicator that the patient is dehydrated. Another thing we look at is the osmolality in the urine. If it is greater than 600, then this is a good indicator the patient is dehydrated. If it is less than 300, then this is an indicator that it could be caused by diabetes insipidus. Another thing we look at is the sodium in the urine. If the level is greater than 20, this could be caused by renal impairment. The hypernatremia could be caused by renal impairment. If it is less than 10, then this could be caused by something else, maybe dehydration. Once the physician is done reviewing the lab values, he could go ahead and make the decision as to what the treatment modality will be. Whether it is uh, administering isotonic IV fluids such as normal saline or D5W, um, also whether he's going to start the patient on diuretics, and he will definitely order I's and O's, intake and output, and a sodium restriction. We don't want this condition to get any worse. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video to be super helpful. And if I missed anything on hypernatremia, make sure to check the description box below. I'll add little things in there. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, NurseKarma24. And I'll be seeing you guys till next time. Hippie love, signing out. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. There will be more fun videos coming up.